So I mentioned to you before that parity is not a sufficient scheme for guaranteeing integrity when we start send large data packets. Uh, sending a single bit for each byte is awkward. What we would rather do is we want to take a transmission packet and we want to append some information to it so that when it is received at the receiving end, they can look at it and have some reasonable sense of assurance that errors did not take place during the journey. So for example, uh, let's say that a packet like this, 475E34, was received at the far end of a transmission. And they want to know, looking at this, have any errors occurred? Maybe one of the bits got flipped. Maybe originally this was sent as a 5F, and one of the bits here, the, the, the bit in this F, got changed from a 1 to a 0 because it got some kind of power surge or hit by a cosmic ray or some other thing happened and all of a sudden the 5F turned into a 5E. So when it got received here, it got received like that, whereas the original message maybe was actually like this. We want to append some information to the originally transmitted packet to make sure that the far end will look at this and say, yeah, that, that's, that's what I sent. Now, my original plan today had been to do this lesson in hexadecimal, but given that so many of you are unfamiliar with it, it's perfectly okay. I'm going to just do the lesson in decimal. I'll do the lesson in decimal. So let's say that instead of this example, let's say that the transmitter wanted to send this package here. Let's say 8, 14, 200 and uh, 17. Let's say it wants to send these numbers from one location to another location. We want to append another number in this box that's going to help the, res the receiving end figure out if these numbers were the ones that were originally sent or if an error has occurred. That's what we want to do. And there are two schemes for doing this. One is called the checksum. And the other one is called a cyclic redundancy check. Now, in this checksum, you see the word sum is involved. And that's because we're going to be adding the numbers together. That's what we're going to do. So the way the checksum is calculated is simple. We're going to take all the numbers, and we're going to add them together. And then at, after we're all finished with that, we're going to do some modulo. And then this number here that we're going to mod is going to be dependent on how big a checksum we typically want to provide. Most checksums that are used today tend to be 8 bits long. So what is the largest number that I can transmit in 8 bits? What is this number right here? What number is that? Yes. It's 255. So typically, typically, we would mod or divide by 256. And if I was writing this using hexadecimal, it would be like this, like that. Um, but right now, I'm doing the whole problem for you in decimal, so we'll just use the 256. OK? So, and. To calculate the checksum, so we're going to do the checksum. We're going to add all the numbers together. We're going to do a modulo 256. And then we're going to take this whole thing, and we're going to multiply it by minus 1. Now, why are we multiplying by minus 1? Here's what we want to do. We want to pick this number in such a way that when we add this plus this plus this plus this plus this and do modulo 256, what will the result be if we follow this formula? We want the result to be 0. So the checksum is picked in such a way so that if we add up all these numbers together and then do a mod 256, the result's going to come out to be 0. So what I'd like you to do right now is I'd like you to calculate the checksum for this sequence right here. So I want you, and you can use your calculators on this rare occasion. You can use your calculators if you want to. I don't think you'll need to, but maybe you want to use them, whatever. So add these numbers together, do modulo 256. Remember, modulo means what is the leftover, the remainder, when we divide the sum by 256. 
and then take that answer and multiply it by minus 1 and put that in the green box. I'll meet you back here in just a little while. I've picked this example because the modulo part is easy to calculate. The next one won't be so easy. Okay, has anyone successfully added all the numbers together? How much is the sum of all the red numbers? Who can tell me? 239. 239. Next question, if I go 239 mod 256, how much is that? Yes, 239. So what would I put in the green box? Negative 239. So in the green box, I'm going to put minus 239. Now look what happens when I add up all the numbers. Do you see that I get a zero? Look, I add this and this and this and this and this. I get a zero. So now when I transmit the bits, I transmit this, I transmit this, I transmit this, I transmit this, and I transmit this at the end. And the far end knows that this last part here is just a checksum. It knows it's not part of the payload. It says, OK, this is the part that I delivered to my user. That's the payload. And just to make sure that the bits arrived in good health, I add everything together. And if the answer comes out to be a 0, I got a pretty good assurance that I didn't get any errors. I'm going to take a s did you have a question? In here? Well, that's still an error. Unfortunately, you've introduced an error where you might not have had one before, but it's still an error. You're gonna, you're gonna, if there is an error here or anywhere, you, the, the far end will have to ask the, the transmitting end to retransmit the message. So let's try a slightly harder one. I would like to know what should I be using as the checksum here? So you add all the numbers together. Modulo 256, what's the remainder going to be when we divide by 256? Take that number and put the negative of it over here. Okay, I'm going to start by adding all the blue numbers together, and I believe that should come out to about 311. Yes? Mm -hmm. Now, on the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a modulo 256. When 311 is divided by 256, how much is left over? 55, let's try it. 256 plus 55, 1, 1, 3. Okay, so 55 is left over. So what number will we put in the box, Miss Olivia? We want to make sure, Miss Olivia, that the number that we're sending isn't some gigantic number because we don't have a lot of room. I've only given you four data points here, but typically there'd be an entire file of numbers here, huge. And so if we don't do this mod, our checksum is going to come out this big. And we don't have that much room to transmit, so we need to find a way to small, make it smaller. And so this is a good way to make it smaller, where we only keep the last. How many bits are we keeping here? Eight bits. Very good, sir. We're only keeping eight bits for our checksum. We're only keeping eight bits. So what number now are we going to put in here? Yes, sir, Mr. Ben. Negative 55. Negative 55. So now, if I was to add up all these numbers and then take a modulo 256, what would the result be? Yes, sir. Zero. Zero. Shall we try it? Add up all the blue numbers. It's going to be this 311 plus the negative 55. How much is that going to be? 256. And 256 mod 256 is going to be 0. So we're picking this checksum in such a way so that when we add up all the numbers, it comes out to 0. That's the trick. That's the trick.